Okay, welcome to BB Skills and Fitness. I'm Luke Brimble. In this video, I'll be talking about an injury that I sustained to my knee and my recovery back to full fitness. Just want to put a shout out to Little Chi Chi's for the new stash that I'm wearing today. Okay, putting our new logo on these really nice hoodies and they've made these six snapbacks. If you like the contents of this channel, make sure you subscribe, press the notifications bell, and this will let you know when we upload new content. And if you've got any comments, make sure you leave them below. If you like this video, make sure you press the like button. So during the game, I sustained a really nasty knee injury uh, to, my, to my right knee. This was April 2017, um, and at the time I was playing um, in a rugby league fixture for a team um, that are called the Spartans. Uh, what this is, this is a, a joint team um, between two corps in the British Army, so the um, Royal Army Physical Training Corps and the um, Army Medical Services. You know, at the, at the time I was, um, I was quite well conditioned, um, pretty strong. You know, I was 30, 32 years old at the time. So yeah, in gen generally, it's sort of good condition. My job is, is a physical training instructor, so you know, I do, I do keep quite fit. The game was pretty even. We were sort of playing out of our 20. Um, got a, a nice little pass from a, a good friend of mine, Jordan Kerman who's uh, also now um, sustained a um, ACL injury and he's currently recovering as well. So um, yeah, he gave me this nice little ball, inside ball, hit a nice line and, and made a breakthrough. Got to the full back, footwork wasn't good enough to get around him so um, he wrapped me up quite, quite well. Um, okay, then there was another player came in, okay, wrapped me up, held me up. Um, at this point, I was trying to find the floor so I could then play again. But as that was happening, I sort of turned my back, okay, to the players as they're holding me up. Like, and as I planted my leg, a third player came in and just literally dived into my one straight locked out leg. And instantly, I heard a massive snap. Initially, I thought that I'd broken my leg. Okay, we all sort of fell to the floor. And all I felt instantly was um, excruciating pain to my right to my right knee. Yeah, I sort of looked up and couldn't see any obvious, obvious breaks um, to any bones or anything. So that was good. But then, you know, it was quite worrying that my my knee had very limited stability. You know, and there was um, instant swelling. Um, got carried off. Um, pitch side, I'd had, had a little bit of um, first aid. Immediately uh, compressed the knee um, and iced it. Okay, and then just waited, waited to the um, to, to the rest of the game um, had finished. All I remember is being pitch side, just being in excruciating pain for the next sort of 30, 40, 40 minutes. After the game, okay, I, was, I was driven back to where I was living at the time, which was Tidworth. The day I injured my knee was uh, also, you know, the, the, the day I promoted to Staff Sergeant. A bad day, but with some good news at the same time. Okay, and then just rest. And then just compressed and iced the knee uh, and just took painkillers. Um, you could tell straight away there was um, a lot of, of bleeding. Okay, with, with the bruising that was um, up and down my, my, my knee, which you can see in the photos. Okay, and the swelling, my, my knee, my sort of, my medial part of my knee, the inside of my knee was really swollen. Um, I couldn't load bear. Um, I was hobbling around. Every time I'd even tried to lean on my knee, was just no stability the muscles would just give way it was just not felt like there was not much holding my knee together yeah so I just spent that evening just icing it as much as I could um, elevating the knee and and just taking painkillers really to 
try and get rid of some of the, the pain. So the next day I went to the um, to the doctor's. Yeah, instantly the, the doctor was like, you know, you, you've done something pretty nasty to your knee. Um, you need to go. You need to go to the to the hospital. Um, X-ray, A um, and E, X-ray. Uh, let's sort of make sure there's there's nothing's broken. No bones are broken. Immediately after the injury, I. Um, got into the physios and I started using the game game ready uh, which is a compression ice machine you, know, you get a sleeve you put it on the cold water um, runs through the ice into the compression sleeve again it also um, fills up uh, with, with water which then gives it the compression okay and this is um, this was mainly to uh, reduce the swelling of the knee you know, and I would um, I would get on this um, every other day for like the first sort of two weeks, uh, just to try and massively reduce the um, swelling because it was um, it was quite bad swelling at the time. So yeah, I went to Salisbury A um, and E. So yeah, the hospital X-rayed my knee, and there wasn't any um, there wasn't any breaks, but they could tell from the from the X-ray that there was bone bruising. So I was referred to the to the fracture clinic. There, seen some more doctors, some more nurses, and um, yeah, again, they were like, yeah, there's um, obviously uh, ligament damage. Next step was MRI scan, which was about four weeks later. Take t took a bit of time on the NHS. Um, so got down to the down back down to Salisbury, had the scan. Okay, and then that took a couple. A couple of days to get the results results back. Uh, when I did get the results back, okay, the, the injury was confirmed as as uh, a full rupture of my my PCL, so my posterior cruciate ligament. Um, my medial cruciate ligament was um, pretty torn up. Um, that was a, a, a partial tear, but a pretty a pretty full on full on tear, not the full way. Okay, so it was sort of dangling on by a little bit. Okay, I had a, a small tear to my um, LCL. Okay, so lateral cruciate ligament, and um, I had some severe bone bruising around that area, and my patella uh, patella tendon was um, was strained, so stretched. Uh, you know, if anyone that has a, an injury like this, okay, will we'll tell you that it's pretty tough. You know. There was an instant change to my lifestyle. And I was a fit um, PT instructor, and then I was very limited on, on on what I can train. So not only is it my job, that is my hobby. So I couldn't do my job. I couldn't do my hobby. Okay, being at home, I had um, two young children at the time. Okay, if, um, Logan was three, and Finley was um, not long one years old. So two kids that are are full of energy so for me it was a, re a really tough time really and I had to it got, I was down a lot at, at that stage um, so yeah very, very tough I just had to sit down with the physios and set up a, a plan for me to get back to full fitness as quick as possible uh, something that was also going to be realistic and achievable so I set the um, so set the time frame to one to one year. After I sustained the the injury in, in the, the next couple of days, I'll just tell you about the sort of symptoms that I that I had. Um, I couldn't um, weight bear. Um, my knee was really hot. The whole area was just red hot compared to the rest of my rest of my body. Um, whether that's the body trying to repair itself, I, I don't know. The swelling. My energy levels had, had changed a lot. And I just felt really tired. Like you just get to, to one point in the day and you'll just be really tired, really tired. And that's not like me to be like that. And I don't know if that's because of the body trying to repair itself or a combination of me not walking properly. So I can sort of understand that if I'm not walking efficiently, 
then using a lot more energy. I'd have to manage my diet because my energy expenditure would um, was going to change. You know, that I'm, I'm used to going from burning 4,000 plus calories a day to then, you know, burning probably half that. Uh, you know, a massive thing in recovery is, is making sure that you manage your weight because if you're going to get massive weight gain, that's that's going to slow down your recovery. Um, and my goal was to be back within 12 months, and that's back playing within 12 months. After after the injury, I felt like a burden to, to my wife. Um, you know, she had the, the two boys to look after as, as well, and I was very limited on, on, on what I could do. I'm like hobbling around the house. You know, I couldn't do the normal jobs that I do around the house, uh, and she was having to, to pick all these up. You know, so, so for me, that's not a, a, a nice thing, and I, I really personally struggled with this. I have to thank my wife, Kim, for the support she gave me uh, during my injury. She was an absolute star throughout the whole time I was injured. So after the MRI scan, and it was all confirmed, I went back to the physios, um, a girl called uh, Saskia, who's a, a friend of mine, was, was helping me with my, with my treatment. We sat down, we um, came up with, with what was going to be realistic and, um, and how I was going to get back playing as fast as possible. The sort of big unknown was, would I need surgery or not? So for now it was just, let's just concentrate on, on rehab. Try and get my knee back to the best move, because my knee was very, very limited. I couldn't completely straighten my leg so this was then have an effect on the muscles in that area because they were starting to deteriorate because I wasn't using them properly or having the fair, full range of movement so I noticed massively that my like I haven't got massive quads anyway but I, I'm, I noticed massively that my quads um, especially my right quad reduced in size quite quickly as well so it's like that atrophy, so the the muscle getting smaller. The, f the focus around this time was just trying to get that movement back as quick as possible, which I really struggled with. You know, it was very painful because of the bone bruising to try and lock out my leg. And the because of, because of the damage to the patella tendon being stretched, that was then limiting me as well. So it was a very complex injury. There was multiple tears to ligaments, uh, and this is why it, it did make the, the, the rehab a little bit more complicated. So over the next sort of um, six months, you know, I had some really good rehab, got given some um, really good advice from, the, from, um, from Saskia, who um, was, a, was a massive help in my recovery. I eventually got up to a stage where I was you know, walking pain-free, which was good. I had full movement back into my knee after some really hard work to, to get that movement back. But then actually, you know, it feels like, it feels like you're going nowhere in your recovery and it's really slow and it's dragging on. You're really demotivated. And then, but then instantly, you, you know, it's picking up and your recovery starts to go really quick towards the end. You know, I started walking and, and then not long after that, I was jogging. And then not after, long after that, I was doing a little bit more high intensity work, running. And then I started doing interval training. So I'm doing running for longer periods of time. I'm still carrying on with all my strength and conditioning, okay, to strengthen the, um, the, the muscles to the point where I was running pretty comfortable now. There was still, you know, it's, my knee wasn't 100%, you know, far from it. You know, a good 80, 80% at this stage, but I'm, I was, it was good enough for me to run. But the physios at this point, okay, had concerns about the, about the movement in my knee still. So they referred me back to the um, surgeons at Southampton, okay, knee surgeon, who then took a, took a look at the knee. Um, I was then told that his thoughts were that it was a clinical grade two tear to my PCL 
he was happy that my MCL would heal, my, uh, my LCL was good, uh, my patella tendon was in a good place. Okay, so now the only concern was the was was the PCL. His thoughts were that it was a clinical grade two tear to my PCL. He was happy that my MCL would heal, my uh, my LCL was good, uh, my patella tendon was in a good place. Okay, so now the only concern was the was was the PCL. He classed it as a, as a clinical as a clinical grade two. So he was happy that the area was quite strong. Okay, and he recommended that I didn't have surgery, which was um, you know, which was a massive a massive winner for me. I didn't want surgery. Um, invasive surgery into my knee is is not going to be a good thing, especially if the results would be similar anyway. If I had surgery, my knee might show the same amount of stability or movement. So I took a bit, took a, his advice and decided, you know, just to make sure that I just really smashed my rehab and continue to, probably for the rest of my life really, to keep that area strong. You know, I've heard of the, the chances um, of arthritis if you have invasive surgery. Into, that, was a, that was a massive reason why I didn't want the surgery. But also, one of the negative points is that I'm 30, 35 now, so I'm going to be quite strong. But is my knee, when I'm older, if I make it that far, you know, 80 years old, how am I going to, how is it going to be then? I don't know. And you know, that might be a decision to make when I get to that age, is that do I have surgery then? You know, the only time would tell. The sort of exercises I was um, doing throughout my recovery um, all started off really simple and then were, were really progressive. Initially started with just trying to get the movement back, which is little sort of half squats with my back against the wall, really simple things like this, just trying to uh, gain back that uh, mobility in, in the knee area. You know, stuff like leg extensions, that's going to help. Um, eccentric holds, um, so you'll push up with two legs and then you'll release with one, just trying to build that strength up in the, in the weaker leg. Uh, these were, were very useful exercises. You know, and then you move on to stuff like sort of hopping, um, or, or just hopping onto a bench, that sort of stuff. You're, you're starting to do um, RDLs, building up hamstring strength. Okay, you're looking at Bulgarian split squats, squats, um, deadlifts, all at a, a, lower, a lower weight, just trying to get back that strength. And then as you progress through, you're going to, onto more complex movements like jumping and and a little bit of hopping, you know, you've got running in there, jogging, um, cardio. In the whole time I'm doing cardio, so I'm, I'm rowing still, um, I'm on the bike, I'm trying to just burn these calories still, um, I'm trying to work aerobically, so I'm, I'm trying to keep the heart and lungs fit um, throughout, my, throughout my training. Yeah, I still didn't want to neglect the aerobic conditioning, so my, my fitness. You know, and then and then towards the end of the recovery, you know, I'm starting to hit a lot of strength work now. Okay, low reps, high high weights. Um, I'm doing more explosive work. So I'm working on power. Um, I'm doing box jumps. I'm I'm doing lateral jumps. So I'm I'm jumping and turning and landing. Okay, just to really test these this joint. I'm doing burpees. And then sort of latter stage in, in the in the in the month before a return to playing rugby, you know, I'm looking at falling to the floor. How does my knee uh, cope with me falling? Um, going into light training, so um, I'm running around and passing. Um, I'm being exposed to, to grass and mud. It's slippy. Okay, it's soft underfoot. It's just, it's just different. And then towards right towards the end, I'm I'm slowly introduced into tackling, being tackled, okay. And just when you're when you're doing this, it's really progress it, build up to it slowly. Don't go straight into a game or, or training where it's um, a high intensity. Just let people know what your injury is, and you know you're going through the motions of getting tackled. 
okay, but just to learn it all again and just build up that that sh that faith in your in your knee. The good thing about my job is that I have um, people under my care that are in similar situations. They've been injured, and my job is the latter latter stage of the recovery, which is the conditioning. So it's really good for me and also motivating to be training alongside other people that are in a similar boat to me. On April 2018, I went to the doctor um, and yeah, that was me fully recovered from, from my injuries. And then I was back playing, back playing rugby the next day. The doctors did advise that I should consider playing rugby. Um, maybe taking up a different sport or hobby but you know it's a it's a sport that I love I was only 30s at the time so you know I don't want to I didn't want to look back and, re and regret not playing so I decided after then to continue playing and so yeah, my, I had my first game back in April um, 2018 and this was a, a rugby league again um, because the un I'd missed the whole union season. Straight back into rugby league playing against the infantry. Um, and yeah, I just remember getting the first ball, I think I played second row. So a position where you're going to take some contact. Yeah, I just remember taking the, the first ball in uh, and getting tackled. Um, got a hit on my, on my left knee went down, got up, it was all good. So I, I, I'd done a lot of training, so I'd exposed my knee to, to tackle. So there, was, I hope, there shouldn't have been much different between the game. Sometimes the games can because you know your oppositions and you really want to beat each other. So you go a little bit harder, I suppose. But um, yeah, I remember taking a knock to my, to my right knee I'm fine. You know, I just had faith in all the all the rehab that I had done, and you know, three tackles, four, five, and yeah, not drama the whole game. All was good, and I was back in. I'd I'd achieved my one year goal. I was uh, just under the year, so really happy to be back playing at that stage. I think I've probably played the best rugby that I've ever played. You know, I'm a little bit more aware of what's going on around me on the, on the field. You know, I really concentrate on my strength and conditioning, about how important it is to um, strengthen these areas. The kicking part of my game was something that um, took me a little bit longer to, to get back into. Um, uh, this was mainly just to just be a bit sore as I, as I kicked um, the rugby ball. Okay, um, yeah, this was still a little bit sore on the area, so it did take me a little bit longer to um, to get back into kicking uh, properly in rugby. One thing I did do is uh, during my recovery, I got a um, this is called a wall ball. So it's a uh, half a rugby ball that you can use uh, just to keep on top of your your passing skills. So it's something that I would, um, put, as I was resting during during my sets in my training, I would uh, just get this ball, uh, just throw it the ball, and just get that muscle memory into passing. Okay, repetition, repetition. When I actually came back into rugby, I was probably better at passing than I was before. So I've done so much of this repetition of, of passing. You know, also kept me focused. On, on rugby and, and the, the all my aim of getting back and, and playing rugby. So I, I would say that the, the, the knee itself now, um, a year later, is, you know, it, it's never gonna be 100%, I, and I understand that. So, and, I, and I'll live with that, and that's a fact. Of, and the risk of playing sports like this is that you've got blokes that are trying to tackle you to the floor, it's full contact, 
and this is uh, this is one of the risks. I've had uh, multiple injuries, shoulder, I've had a knee um, injury before. Okay, so you know, the risks are there, but the, the knee itself is can get a little bit achy, which I didn't have before. Nothing too bad, but physically as well, the knee is. It's just different, it's, you know, it's dis deformed slightly, okay, it's not the same as it used to be, especially around the sort of MCL area where the bone is, it's like the bone protrudes more, weird, um, I don't know if it's because the bone's got thicker, because the bone grows in, what, but it's just not the same. MCL um, feels different. You know, it's probably got it's got scar tissue, so it is going to feel different compared to my other one. And how it used to feel before it does feel different. And my where my um, quad sort of inserts, okay, it, it's a little bit different as well. And that will, will never be the same. But it has got good stability, so the, the ligaments are doing their job. Uh, the muscles are strong around that area and it's enabled me to play again. So yeah, for you guys that have just, and you're probably watching this because you've sustained a, um, some ligament damage to your knee recently and you know, just look on the, on the bright side, okay, it's, all, it's not all doom and gloom, just stay positive, try and keep motivated, okay, adapt your diet, Try not to, to, to gain any weight. Engage with your with your physios. Engage with your rehab. You have to yeah, you have to do it. No one's going to help you except yourself. Okay, the, the physios are there to give you advice and to guide you, but you're the one that has to do the hard work. Set yourself a realistic timeline and a goal to get back to full, to full fitness. Press to get the MRI scans and the x-rays, find out early, as early as possible, what your injury is, so the physios then can, can then help you the best they can. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you give it a like. If you like the contents of the channel, and the channel is based around fitness, health, skills, to make you better athletes and better coaches, make sure you subscribe and press the not notifications bell. This will then tell you when we upload new contents. Make sure you leave a comment if this video has been useful. Have you had a um, injury recently and how have you find, found it? Well, thanks for watching guys. Hope the video helped. Uh, make sure you check out some of our other content.